and welcome to Fireside Chat with the Johnstons. I'm Danielle. And I'm Justin. And we are here with you today to bring you an episode on YouTube and on podcasts. So whether you're watching us today or listening, make sure you hit like and subscribe and share this with a friend. Let's go. So we are two of the owners of Next Generation Gym Owners, an all-star cheer gym owner mentorship program where we will help you be successful both on and off the mat. We also own Twister Sports, a gym in the middle of Missouri. <laughs> Where? <laughs> the Warrensburg, Missouri. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've ever heard of that, yeah. then you're kind of weird. It's a state, um, state in the middle of the U.S. Do so. you know we're like two hours from literally like the center the of center, the United yeah. States? We've never visited because it's in a farm. Anyway, our gym does, it's a fairly large gym, large facility, large amount of athletes, in a very small town. We do competitive and recreational, cheerleading, tumbling, gymnastics, dance, batting cages, yep. birthday exactly. parties, kind of all the things. So Because in a small town, you can. Then you have to. Or you have to. <laughs> yeah. have to. <laughs> we kind of like, we're like, what's missing? Oh, can we do it? What's yeah. missing? We're going to do it. We start every episode of, good, of Fireside Chat with good news. Yeah, it's so what's your good news? To think about good things that happened this week. Yeah, what's your good news? Because so, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. yeah, we had a good mix this weekend of yeah. being productive and relaxing. And I did both yesterday when I booked our trip for next summer to Italy. Yeah. We are going to visit. We've had five foreign exchange students. Three of them were from Italy. Yep. And we are going to visit all three of them next summer and just like tour Italy. Yeah, fly into Milan and then cruise on down to and fly out of Rome. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and we're going to see, like, I've never been to Venice. You've been to Venice. Mm -hmm. I didn't even tell you this. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is only an hour from where we're going to be in Florence. Yep. So, we're going to go visit and just see it all. Just go check it out. Be yeah. a tourist. Yep. Yeah. I know, like, a couple words in Italian. So, I think we'll be fine. Ciao. And my good news is uh, my son, is uh, his birthday's coming up, and so I'm looking at doing something super exciting and helping out the environment in Texas. So we're looking at going uh, hog hunting from helicopters. So. He'll be 22. This yeah. is going to be like... Like a dream come true, like the ultimate coolness. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing like hanging out of a helicopter shooting feral hogs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. And oh, yeah. He was yeah. over yesterday, like, eating dinner. And Justin's like, okay, Chase, I've got a surprise for you, something I want to do for your birthday. He's like, pretty excited about it. And Chase goes, can I guess? And that's what he guessed. And, like, I've never heard you guys talk about this. What is up with this? Oh, he talked about it a long time ago. And then I was like, oh, this is, that would be cool. That yeah. That would be the ultimate. And Smart it turns out thing. his birthday is during the best time of the season to go do that. Because yeah, I guess they're more out in the open because there's less vegetation so you can find them easier but smart but, kid but anyways they tear up they tear up farmland and uh i guess they produce a lot of piglets all over the place yeah multiple times so the moral of the story is if you tell justin something one time that he'll be excited about you probably get to go do it and it'll be his idea <laughs> so and you can bring home a ton of meat so that's so gonna be cool caribbean thing. puerto rico virgin islands i want to do all those things justin <laughs> there you go Okay, so guys, we're gonna get into a great topic today. Justin came to me a couple days ago. He's like, we've gotta talk about this. Yes, so it's the benefits of owning a gym. What are the benefits, <laughs> both intangible and tangible, of owning a gym? Because there's a ton. Like, we don't live the same life we used to live, yeah. working an eight to five job at a you know W-2 position. Regular job. Regular job. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, but I already said regular job. So I think there's another <laughs> way to say it. But, oh. <laughs> you know, the normal day-to-day -day grind, we don't live that anymore. And it's because of this gym. Yeah. So. And you might be listening to this thinking like, okay, I don't need to watch about <clears throat> the benefits of owning a gym. I know the benefits. Yeah. Cool. Keep listening because there might be some really good things that you're missing out on that your gym could be providing for you, both tangible and intangible. Yeah. We've, we try to push the envelope and think outside the box a lot. And uh, so they might, it might surprise you. It might kind of get you excited because when I first started the gym, did never thought that this would be the way we live now and what we have. So, yeah. Right. So like everything with the Johnstons, this <clears throat> is actually going to be longer than we expected. So plan for a two part episode yeah. today. We're going to get into why it's important to have the benefits from your gym and some of those intangible things. And then on the next episode, we'll talk about the tangibles. All right. Let's dive in. 
Let's dive in. Okay, so the first reason why your gym should be giving back to you is because anything you invest time and money into that you're taking away from your family or your friends or other parts of your life should give you a return of some kind. In fact, I venture to say it should give you a big return. Yeah. Right? Why not? Right now, if you're operating your gym as a hobby, meaning you're not taking a paycheck, you don't have these tangible benefits or even maybe the intangible benefits of being able to set your own schedule, you have to remember owning a gym is not a hobby, right? Owning a gym is literally a job. Maybe you coach a sideline team for six weeks a year or you know you fill in as an all-star coach at another gym. Those are things that can be hobbies, but actually owning a gym is not a hobby. Why? Because once the IRS gets involved, it's no yeah. longer a hobby. Yeah, they don't see it as a hobby. Mm-hmm. They don't see it as a hobby. As soon as you have to start filing an annual tax return and you are required to claim income, it's no longer a hobby. Yeah. It's I, very much a business at that point. Yeah. Think of other hobbies like the golf course is never going to come seize your assets and your property because you didn't pay taxes on something. So golfing is a hobby, jeeping, like if you like to go on trails with your Jeep, hiking, fishing, all hobbies. Owning a cheer gym, not a hobby. There's a lot of money that goes in and out of that hobby. So Absolutely. Uh, and, and if it's not managed well, it can hurt you. But if it is managed well, it can be really good. As soon as you have a duty and responsibility to staff, to families in the gym, like think about it. If there is anything that could take you to court because somebody paid for something and you didn't provide the service or a refund, if there's anything that could take you to court, it's no longer a hobby. Yeah. The fish are not taking you to court. It's not a liability. It could be a liability. It could so, be yeah. if you're not running it correctly. Right. So let's make it an asset and not a liability. Yeah. All right. Number two is owner burnout and poor cash flow. Oh, that is the top two reasons that we see people close their gyms. And I love it when I see somebody say they sold their gym, but they didn't sell the business. They actually just sold mats. Used used equipment. Tumble track. You didn't sell your gym if you just sold the equipment, right? I can sell when we had a restaurant franchise. I could sell the restaurant franchise along with the equipment with or without it or I could just sell the equipment. But one is selling a business, literally transferring the LLC. Another one is just selling the equipment from the business. Your business can and should have value for you if you're building it correctly so that one day you can sell it. And we've talked to a lot of business brokers, either a large company will come in, an investment company will come in and either invest and buy a large portion or all of your gym. 70% or 100% Yep, is what we're looking at. A staff member in the gym or a parent in the gym. Those are the top three people that are known for, like statistically, for buying programs. However, if you're just selling the equipment because you haven't built up systems, you don't have good processes in place, you're, you don't have a positive cash flow, then you have nothing to sell and you only have your equipment. So you're not selling the business, you're selling the equipment. So the owner burnout, if you're doing everything in the business, I mean, one, that burns you out, but two, you have nothing to sell because when you right. leave, you take every, you take all the knowledge with you, right? right? What's left. Also, when you build your business, you're going to find that you see less and less burnout. I would yep. say when it comes to our gym, <clears throat> if I'm not coaching a whole lot in one season, I don't burn out that season with the gym. There are other businesses we own that like, if I have to carry one mattress out of an apartment complex into a dumpster, I'm burned out. It's not for me. Okay. So like I experience owner burnout in other businesses. You act like that happens all the time. It <clears throat> happened once and it was gross. <laughs> It's not for I asked for help one time, and that has been, like, traumatizing to you. And I have since given you a list of people who you can ask to help you. Yeah. Okay? Bed bugs are not for me. (laughs) (laughs) But because I don't do everything in my gym, I don't experience owner burnout as much as I would if I were there from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. answering phones, coaching the teams, working the front desk, taking the enrollments, Mm -hmm. pressing the T-shirts, I don't experience that burnout the way other people would if they were doing those things. Now, as a coach, I'm coaching three teams this year. Do I experience coach burnout? Yes, totally. I think all of us do because we have a 12. 